Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Nuggets News. In this video, I wanna talk about Bitcoin. What makes this technology so appealing? Why I got into it in 2012? And where I see this all going in the future? The fact is we've seen a huge increase in interest over time towards this technology, and I wanna explore the reasons why that is. The first one is that this technology is exciting. You can't help but read about all the components of this ecosystem and not get addicted, go down the rabbit hole, become part of this community, and very few people leave. People wanna learn more. Technology stocks and applications such as Facebook have shown us that we can experience exponential user growth when these once in a lifetime technologies come along. The fact is we're still only in the millions of active users in the Bitcoin space. And if we're gonna to get to the point where we're using this in our everyday lives, we're gonna get into the billions of people that are using Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. People believe in this technology. So when you discover this technology, people believe that they're gonna hold this, it's gonna act as a store of value, it's gonna to continue to go up if more people hold it. And that's demonstrated here by the top 100 richest Bitcoin addresses. A lot of these are dormant for a number of reasons, but a lot of people have that hodl mindset that they're gonna hold their coins. As long as more people join this ecosystem over time, it's gonna act as a great store of value and it's gonna to continue to go up in price. The other part of that argument is that it's quite scarce. We have a limited number of Bitcoins. So we know that only 21 million can ever be produced. Current circulating supply is around 16.7 million but we don't know what percentage of those are lost. So this is an article here talking about people that may have forgotten their password, lost their hard drive, their computer's been destroyed. A number of people pass away each year. All these things contribute to the number of Bitcoins that aren't available on exchanges to purchase and that only adds to that scarcity. The basics of supply and demand would say that the likely path for the Bitcoin price is gonna to continue to be higher as long as more people discover Bitcoin. Now people want control of their own money. People are sick of having these capital controls and banks and governments telling them what to do. So capital controls in China here, you can't take money out of the com um, country, you've gotta report certain withdrawal amounts. Think about Greece ATM limits. Cyprus with bank freezes. This is gonna to continue to happen worldwide and I'll talk about why that is as we move forward. But having control of your own money, becoming your own bank, people love that appealing nature as well as the digital nature of this cryptocurrency. The other part here is people are sick of this surveillance state, this totalitarian financial system that we now have. So only a few years ago it was a conspiracy theory that the NSA and governments monitored everything we did. Edward Snowden came out and revealed that to be the truth, okay? He disclosed the inner workings of how this is all monitored and people are aware that they're trying to phase out cash. People monitor all our credit card payments. While Bitcoin isn't completely anonymous, the unsensible nature, the unstoppable nature, and it certainly has more anonymity than the current legacy financial system. The next point here is QE. So ever since the global financial crisis in 2008, central banks have been increasing the rate at which they print money. So currencies have always been debased and lose value over time. And the, the debt-based model, the fiat-based model that we use, it's not backed by anything ever since it got unpegged from the gold standard. But the amount of money in circulation as seen here is now into the tens of trillions. And this is just the six largest central banks around the world. And people know that you know, it's the banks and the central banks that get this money. We'll talk about the rich getting richer and why the trickle down economics that this is based on isn't working. The other thing that this has done is driven up asset prices. So people don't want to invest in stocks or, or houses or we see art being pushed up, negative yielding debt. So people used to be able to get five or 10% in a savings account. Bonds have been driven down so far that we now have negative yield. So $11 trillion sitting in asset classes that is guaranteed to give you a negative yield, a decreased return. This is just crazy, this is insanity. Why wouldn't you park some money in a digital asset like Bitcoin that is scarce compared to a negative yielding bond? As I just touched on, the rich are getting richer and the poor are getting poorer. Now, people hate seeing the stock market go up. This is the most hated bull market in history. 
people got burnt during the GFC. People lost half of their retirement and savings accounts that they had in the stock market invested. People don't want to be part of this corrupt rig system with you know, high frequency trading, all these algorithms. People know that it's not a level playing field. They don't want to be part of this system and cryptocurrency is that level playing field that hasn't yet been tainted. We'll talk about how Wall Street's joining the party at the end of this presentation. But for the most part, people know that this is a fair go, that they're investing early in this cryptocurrency space. Central bankers and bankers are corrupt and people know that. People are sick of it. People are sick of hearing stories of corruption, money laundering, fines, and the bankers that do this, the CEOs, they don't get in trouble. They don't go to jail. So this is Lloyd Blank Fine. Goldman Sachs were, was making bets against their own customers during the GFC and they got fined. It's a drop in the ocean compared to how much money they make from doing these things. And the system goes on. These people are billionaires. They get a new job at another institution. No one gets in trouble. They get bailed out and the system goes on. And, and the average man on the street is the one that ultimately suffers. So banks are already back to their record profit level. So after the GFC, we did see a decline in banking profits and now we're already back to those levels. And this is from Q2 this year. So those record profits have already been surpassed and a lot of the functions that banks provide can be replaced by cryptocurrency. We know that it's frictionless. It's gonna you know, break down those barriers for remittance, payments, all those fees, exchange rates that banks continue to rip us off. You know, they're gonna be replaced. This legacy financial system is nothing compared to this new cryptocurrency monetary system that we're gonna have in the future. So this is the wealth inequality that I've touched on a few times. We can see here the top 1% continue to get richer and this is a huge percentage increase overall when you consider the bottom 90% just in the past 10 years. Huge, huge decline in the wealth, the share of wealth that's held from those rich versus not even the poor, it's the middle class and upper middle class that are struggling to keep up with the, the cost of living, I, I guess, compared to all this money printing that's going to financial assets and making the rich richer. There's signs everywhere that people are fed up and they're willing to do anything for change. So, you know, people are angry. Brexit, Donald Trump getting elected, people are willing to take a risk and go to extremes to try anything different because the current system is letting them down. They're not getting a fair go and these examples are everywhere. The next one is, as I just touched on, the banking industry is ripe for disruption. So think of all the other industries that have been disrupted. Netflix here um, compared to pay TV. But think about email replacing you know, postage, Uber replacing taxis, Airbnb replacing hotels. All these industries that are ripe for disruption and banking is one of the worst, the most corrupt that cryptocurrency is ready to take over and disrupt. The next thing I wanna talk about is why we're actually still a long way off mass adoption. So the average person still hears these stories of, of hacks and these disasters. Just the other day, we had a wallet get to number three on the app store before it got taken down. So people are still cautious and the on-ramps and off-ramps for the, the average Joe, the mum and dad investor, they're still, it's not easy to get in and out of cryptocurrency. Private keys, passwords, multiple websites, how this all works is still hard to get your head around and that's the next wave of innovation I see coming. We want people to be using Bitcoin and cryptocurrency without even realizing that that is what is working in the background of these friendly user interfaces and, and the next wave of innovation that I, that I see coming. Wall Street is just getting on board and we know how much money, I've just talked about how much money is floating around, sloshing around that system Bitcoin ETF seeking approval. We've had the futures. We've got the next round of futures approved next week. There's big money that's about to flow into this system for the first time. And that is gonna give those average investors a way to safely invest. And we want an ETF that has physically backed Bitcoins. We don't want these cash settled futures. We actually want ETFs that are required to hold a set amount of Bitcoins because that is actually gonna increased demand for Bitcoin compared to these cash settled speculative price tracking um, mechanisms like the futures. 
The next one I want to talk about, and Andreas Antonopoulos did a fantastic talk about this recently, and that's renewable energy, so decentralizing energy. So we, we know that governments around the world are talking about climate change and, we, and wind power, hydro, geothermal, biofuel, and solar. We want to roll out these options, but they can be expensive. So one thing that people have been talking about is how much power cryptocurrency and Bitcoin mining uses. But the fact is that we now have a way to fund those, a lot of that innovation. So you can now set up a wind farm, you know, a solar farm, and you can actually mine cryptocurrency in these developing countries to pay that off rather than having to wait for, you know, um, settlement to happen for that ecosystem, that city, those towns to be built, an economy to start functioning and all those things to pay down the cost. We now have a way. If you're going to build a large energy producing farm, you can now pay that off with the debt by mining Bitcoin. It's something that a lot of people think about the wrong way as it, as it, in terms of the energy required um, to keep the Bitcoin ecosystem going. Now, the one that would be remiss not to mention is the price. So we've seen a huge run up in price that obviously gets people's attention. We've got to acknowledge that a lot of what's happening is due to speculators, uneducated investors, FOMO, and maybe we have got a little bit ahead of ourselves. We have run a long way this year. Maybe we do have a pullback, but I'm thinking long term. I still believe that Bitcoin is going to continue to be a lot higher years from now. And that's what is so important for me that you understand this technology and become part of the ecosystem rather than just a speculator. Because if you love this technology, you believe in it, you're less likely to be worried and be shaken out when we get a decrease in price and get scared. All those things are contributing factors that people don't always think about. The RBA, the Reserve Bank of Australia, is warning about this speculative mania. Again, let's be careful when we're investing, dollar cost averaging, not putting all your life savings into this stuff, guys. We've got to be sensible if you're using Bitcoin as an investment. But if you believe in it long term, you know, just be sensible. Be willing. You've got to acknowledge that this is going to be volatile, but think about the, the long term picture where you want this all to go. Finally, I think that anyone that understands the fractional reserve banking system, that fiat-based, debt-based economic monetary system that we currently have has let a lot of people down. It's not working. This is the US national debt, over 20 trillion. It's a similar story um, in terms of debt to GDP in countries around the world. We're in a huge debt hole. People know, people are feeling the pinch. It's harder and harder to make that average living with, with the costs and everything associated with day-to-day -day expenses. So I think you'd agree that exponential use of growth has caused some scaling issues. Bitcoin certainly has to figure those out if we're gonna to continue to grow this ecosystem. That's a challenge that we wanna solve. But Bitcoin and the underlying blockchain technology is far better than our current financial system and ultimately I believe that it will win. If you've enjoyed this video, guys, please hit like, share it around on your favorite pages and groups, subscribe if you haven't already, and as always, thanks for tuning in, guys. Cheers.